So, I hope you can hear me well, but I guess the microphone should work. I'm a little bit old school, so I have my analog cards. I hope you don't mind, it will still work. So, uh, good afternoon from my side. I'm really happy that you joined back in from the break, maybe a bit refreshed. My name is Valeria Henkel, as I was already introduced. So I'm the managing director of the community marketing agency MetaValue, and I'm really honored to speak about a topic that's really close to my heart. So the power of community, why a brand needs a community, and why you should start building your community now. Why uh, community building, of course, is crucial for brand managers today, and I'm convinced with really good reason. Because in times of decreasing brand loyalty and, of course, increasing social fragmentation, those who ignore those immense or immense potential of strong brand communities really missing out and are giving away one of the most crucial potential in levering uh, your consumers into your loyal brand fans. But of course, what we see today is that the inflationary use of the term community in different meanings makes it difficult to deal with the topic in general, because some marketers simply see or view brand communities as their followers on their company's social accounts or the customer portal. But I can say community is much more than that and should be really be an integral part of every modern brand and also company strategy. So in this uh, presentation, I will share insights on how communities or companies can build credibility, trust, and a genuine brand enthusiasm among consumers by investing in the potential of community and using their members really for growth potential for their businesses. So let's try if the slides are working because I have a PDF, but I'm not sure. Okay, we have to do it somehow uh, manual, but yeah, in today's VUCA world, which is really characterized by social disintegration and a polycentric lifestyle, is that we see that targeting and also predicting consumer behavior is a more challenging effort than ever. Also, we see that the internet has provided consumers with access to a wide array of different products and services which is making a lot of trouble for brands when it comes to uh, their efforts when they solely rely on their rational purchasing arguments, so they are easily replaceable. But, of course, there is a solution then to combat these challenges. Brands must focus on community building, so that's kind of my employee for you, uh, plateau for you to build communities, because Therefore, we have a sustainable development of a strong community that provides its members with an emotional added value that's beyond the products and the service the community or the company is offered. When we have a look in a practice, we see that community building provides several benefits helping your brand to stay relevant. And firstly, we see that with a brand community, of course, we see a loyal customer base that grows up with your company, that trusts your brand, that does not switch lightly from the competition, and of course, and that's really important, does not have to be convinced anew for every new purchasing decision. So a really strong potential in here. And also, to state it in numbers, we see that a 5% increase in customer retention through e.g. community building measures really increases profits by 25% up to 95%. So that's huge. Then secondly, of course, communities offer valuable insights and honest feedback. And that can help your company to optimize your offerings. It can help companies to develop new products and increase profitability. Because whether your feedback you got is through a group chat or product uh, reviews or comments or uh, discussions maybe in uh, events or in uh, yeah, virtual group chats, we see that customer-centric communities or companies are 60% more profitable than companies that are not focused on their community building measures. And then the third benefit, of course, because we see that a lot is the vital role of communities 
which play a vital role in attracting Gen Z, so the consumers of tomorrow. Why is that? Because Gen Z is uh, in a growing, growing up in an age of infinitive access to information and has become an educated and savvy consumer, which is why we are observing that this generation has developed, and that's really different from other generations, a keen eye for evaluating their products and companies they support. So they go beyond really superficial information and labels and seek advice and recommendations from their peers and trusted communities. So in fact, what we're seeing at the moment is that their trust in outsiders is at an all-time low. So really, nine out of 10 Gen Zers are trusting rather themselves than others. Which is why communities offer Gen Z a safe space where they feel a sense of belonging, trust, and empowerment. And that's also why, and here we got uh, we'll go to the numbers again, is that 56% of Gen Z considers an active community around a brand a critical factor in their purchasing decision. Then, lastly, of course, because we hear blockchains, communities align with the concept of Web3. I don't have to tell you that, but Web3 has revolutionized the traditional understanding of community building and how communities are through uh, a feud. So, of course, now we have brought about a new way of how community building should be done, emphasizing decentralization and also user-driven platforms. I'm really convinced that community is indispensable to be successful in Web3 because by leveraging Web3 technology and also Web3 cultural approaches, marketers can enhance their community building efforts. How can that be done? Through Web3 technologies, as I already mentioned, because they can facilitate infrastructure design, like creating exclusive virtual spaces for token-gated access, distributing holder perks, or just through incentivizing engagement through e.g. digital assets, like NFTs. Then on the other hand, we have the Web3 cultural approaches. There we can integrate the values of Web3, like transparency, decentralization, security, participation, and ownership in the tonality of our uh, communication. And that meets the customer's needs for interaction and relationships in today's world. But maybe uh, to get to the point in between, we can state that community is the answer to critical business challenges. So whether it's been building brand loyalty, enhancing your product through co-creation and a community-first approach, reaching Gen Z, or positioning yourself successfully in Web3, community is, to an uh, is the answer to those challenges. But that brings us to the fundamental question, what actually is community? Because I said in the beginning, there are different ways on how you can view community. Because whether in politics, business, or society, the concept of community is the buzzword of the hour. I don't have to tell you that. But what does it do? It provides a sense of solidarity and belonging and stands for a digital network and constructive lifestyle. So there's no universally valid definition for community, but maybe I can bring you a few of how we as marketers are viewing it, because in a marketing context, we can define community as a community or a group of people that share an identity-forming narrative and feel committed to common interests, values, or goals. But unlike an association, a community does not need a membership pass or a card or something like that, because above all, it's the feeling of being part of something special that makes the people connect and motivates them to commit to an overarching purpose. So community building by companies or for companies is therefore not primarily about addressing people as customers or persuading them to buy their products or services in the short term. No, the key of success is to decode the narratives and the common ground of the targeted community and also meet the need of belonging, appreciation, and exchange with the appropriate tone. To make it maybe short here, we can really say when we are talking about community, passion and purpose clearly come before the product, and the we becomes before the ego. 
In practice, uh, successful community building require, uh, requires brands to focus on several key insights. And firstly, communities need a clear identity forming narrative that allows members firstly to recognize each other, but what's more important, to differentiate themselves from the rest, from other communities. And therefore, to make that happen, brands must, or brand communities, must polarize to enable identification. And how can that be done? Through sharpening brand positioning, aligning your brand values with like relevant topics in today's society, and also gathering consumer insights and really adapt that to the community. Then, secondly, communities provide support and a sense of belonging in our fragmented society, as I already mentioned in the beginning, because they are offering safe spaces for exchange and interactions. Therefore, it's important that community managers must be really close to the topics and desires, as well as trends of their community, and really understand the community's codes. They should use preferred communication channels of their community members and, most importantly, actively listen to their community members to be successful here. And especially in Web3, ensure really that you know your company's codes and that you can, not your company's, your community's codes, and you can decode them correctly because you need to speak somehow the same language as your members to get along. Then lastly, because when I look at the time, I don't have that many left, we see that communities are so sex, uh, successful because they offer non-commercial spaces. Because while community members may be open to product recommendations and are willing to spend money in areas of their interests, we see that they still seek for a safe space where they don't feel the overwhelming pressure of advertising. So brands should really view community building as a long-term relationship building strategy, providing both digital and analog meeting spaces without, as I mentioned, commercial pressure. Because in general, it's about the exchange between the community members and not solely between the brands and the community members itself. So providing digital spaces that offer exchange, establishing clear rules for interaction, as well as considering creating really physical events like we have today, or highlight events where we really can share some real life experiences, is really crucial to help foster those authentic connections. And then lastly, I come to my conclusion, and I already stated, community is the answer to critical business challenges. So it enhances brand loyalty and intimacy, facilitates co-creation, offers a good or a good way on how to attract Gen Z or Gen Alpha when you're talking about the really young generations, and it aligns with the concept of Web3. So by embracing the power of community, Brands can transform their consumers into their loyal brand fans and turn their community members into their growth drivers for their business. So today I want you to encourage to start building your communities now, embrace the power of community and embark on this journey because I really believe if we build and create those meaningful connections, inspire change and build a strong future for brands and their communities, I think we really can make a lasting impact in today's business world. So remember, community is not just a buzzword, it's a fundamental aspect, of course, also for human nature and a powerful tool for brands in the modern world. So whether we are in the relay of Web 2 or Web 3, community building or community stays essential. And that's the message I want to send out for you today. And that's it. So thank you for your attention. Thanks.